In today's video, I'm going to fit a 24 volt kit to Riga 3. Uh, now, actually, this video went a little bit wrong. I um, actually completed the entire thing, started to upload it, and it lost the first third of the actual video, which was the um, the part where I take the old motor out. But it, I have actually still got the refitting of the new kit. So what I'm going to do is just roughly explain what you do to take the, take everything apart. Um, so basically, we've got the easy 24 volt kit, it, which comes with new motor, supply board screws, sticky pads, everything you need really. Um, what we've taken out is the, old, the, the entire motor, including suspension. For some reason this has got a red suspension band on it. Some dodgy eBay thing probably. Um, supply board. The whole, all, the, all this is the mains, mains volt, voltage motor and mains supply board. All that, has to, all that comes out. Um, this is also underneath the uh, the cover underneath the deck. So there's two screws to take this off, which re reveals motor supply board, um, desolder. I can just don't make it out on here. Either end, there's um, desolder switch, which is on one, one end, and the mains input, which is on the other end here. So there. Um, then you then remove the mains lead entirely. Uh, and I do say in the video, make sure you make that safe. So take the plug off it. Uh, and then the next next step is to fit to fit the kit, and this is where the uh, the original video will then take over. Enjoy. Right now, I've uh, removed the mains lead. Um, don't forget with the mains lead, what you need to do is sort of make it so it's not dangerous. So, especially because we have a mains plug, and at the other end we have bare wires. So, if you plug that in, that's going to kill somebody. So, take the mains plug off at the very least, really. Um, certainly make sure that's safe. Uh, right, back to the job. Uh, there's two wires from the switch. Uh, that's all we've got now. It doesn't matter which way around these are connected because it's just making and breaking a connection. So just make sure they're nice and clean at the ends. Um, we're connecting to these two here, which there's a little square box around. Check your instructions just to be sure, but it's, it's basically the only two spare solder points. I've kind of pre tinned them actually just to try and make it easier. Because for some reason, soldering on camera seems to be virtually impossible. Um, right, ready to go. This, oh yeah, and don't forget, actually, when you're doing this, because I've done this before, remembering this this fits in this position, the wire needs to come through the centre of here. Don't start bringing it this way, because you'll have to start again. Um, which is fairly irritating, right? Okay, so, go to the first connection. Right. Okay, that is so fiddly. All right, what I tend to do is just get a some sort of connection first. It's not done. Right, we're through. Right, that's enough to hold it. And that's it. That isn't it's coming out. <laughs> As I say, I can't solder on film. It doesn't seem to be. Let's get in a better position there. I've just got enough to tin it. Right, make sure it's tightened. Yeah, that's better. And second, get the second right. Turn, try and turn that over a bit more and do a better job of it. I I'm doing this without my glasses. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> right, I think that should do the job. Trim those off in a sec. So, yeah, so I'll go back in there, motor sure that way, that way around. Yeah, when I showed you before, I actually put the motor in upside down, but it's basically that what you want is, is the, the block. But I think I'd put it in upside down. Anyway, you want the block at that side when it goes in. So we'll do that next, but um, just make sure this is sitting, sitting nicely. There you go, next stage. 
Right, now we're moving on to sticking the motor in. Uh, Riga Supply, two different pads for this. There's a thicker one, which is this one, and slightly thinner. They call this a triple and this a twin. This one is for so the Planer 2 and um, some of the, the early decks like um, Planer, oh, which one is it on? RP1, P1, P2 2000 and Planer 2, it, it, it says for that. And this one is for Planer 3. I'm trying to read, just trying to read on video at the same time. Planer 3 Planet, so it's a very early. You can actually, you can actually 24 volt the original planet if you've ever seen one of those. And plane 25, that sort of thing. So this this is the one we need. This is the thicker the thicker pad. Now, first thing to do, take off the cover. I've cleaned within this. I've got, gone in there with a brush and made sure there's no dust or anything like that. Now what you'll need to do with this, and I'll just move the camera, is I can get some light, is align it. Try and align the camera properly. Trying to line the hole with the hole, and I te what I tend to do is put the pad into the deck first. I don't. If you stick it to the motor and then try and align it, it's it's really difficult to get any sort of alignment. So aligning with the hole like that. So just check before you press it down. Just check. Tend to push one of the finger around the inside and just make sure it's actually flush and there's no overhang with that. Because if you can see bits of the pad from the top of the deck, it looks looks very unprofessional. So don't do that. So happy with that. So just just go around and give it. Like press it around. Don't press too hard because this is only a laminate here. There's there's no actual. Um, well, it's actually chipboard on these early ones. There's, there's there's no substance there. It's just just laminate. It's very thick. It's only a couple of mil thick. So don't press too hard on it. So that's it. Now to do the motor, I will have to reposition the camera. Well, re reposition the deck and do that. Uh, just a quick addition to this. I've added both screws into there, so it's not not tight, but just just fitted that in just so that when I turn the deck back upside. Back the right way up. Uh, this isn't gonna. This isn't gonna fall off. Uh, just thought I'd better add that on, just because it's quite a useful thing to do. Right now, switch to another angle. Um, I've taken off a bit of paper off the bottom of the, the sticky pad, so the sticky pad now is is ready to go underneath. Uh, and what I tend to do is get the motor from underneath. The, the reason to do this is you can actually align the pulley with the hole. You want to sort of say, sort of visually centralise it. Now, remembering you need to try and get the the actual uh, connector in the right place. Sort of visually do that from uh, look underneath and make sure that it's actually pointing in the right direction. Now move this motor, keeping it central, very, very slowly. Yep, yeah. there. Now oh, she's touching the pad now. Now put your fingers either side and just give it a quite a firm press. Don't do it without supporting it because if you don't if you don't support it, you could actually. I've actually had a customer, God knows how, but he did manage to push the motor right through the top plate. So it cracked right across here and it, this whole lot lifted up. So that seems to be quite firm. Now that's not going anywhere now. Uh, that's good for years. So that's that part done. Just need to tidy up underneath and we're, we're all done. Oh, before we do that, before we do that, we've left, we've been left with two holes from the screws. Now Riga actually supply, and I've probably lost it already actually. Went in the kit. Um, the one thing that didn't come out of the bag when I did it. There you go. That's your supply. Little stickers which I'll just stick on. Take over the top. Just to keep everything nice. Done. Alright, let's uh, turn the back over and uh, finish up underneath. Right now, we're ready to push all back together again. I'm taking the two these two screws out, because obviously they need to go through this and through the through the cover. Um, what I forgot to say, and the, the, the modern instructions don't tell you this. In fact, the modern instructions tell you that the, the three level pad is for planer three, the two level pad is for planer two. Occasionally, with the earlier decks, you need both pads, so. It's worth just checking for height if you have a look at the, how far the motor comes through. You could actually almost stick the pad in with the cover on and just line up the motor and just have a look at how high it is. Uh, I forgot to mention that. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but it's just occasionally with the, very, with the earlier decks you need the second pad. I have to admit, this one did, so I've actually had to, <laughs> after saying you never get the motor out, um, you can if you're persuasive enough. So I've had to take the motor out on this and put the second pad in because it was just too high and it was, going, it was almost hitting the platter. So. Um, both pads on that, so that's that's fine now. Um, right, let's put the put 
the cover back on. So it's just going to line that up. So lining two different things up there. So you just make sure that it lines up with the sockets on the back as well. Krieger actually supply some longer screws to do this, but I think I think they're a little bit too long, so I just tend to use the originals because they've got plenty, plenty of purchase, and you get them nice and tight. And you don't, it doesn't really need to be ultra tight. Particularly, there's no mains in the here now; it's only low voltage. So even if the, even if this fell off, it's not particularly, not as particularly dangerous. Okay, ready on there. Let's turn it over and let's give it a test. Also, forgot to tell you before I turn the deck over. Just going to sh just going to show you the sockets on the back. We've got a standard 24 volt socket, which is an output from from here. So we have a little one of these type plugs on on the end of it. So for normal use, just plug that in. If you want to upgrade the deck, uh, you then ignore this. You plug a TTPSU into this, which is like a little four pin. If you can see that, there's a little four pin socket, uh, and this you this unit or the one that comes with the TTPSU then plugs in to the TTPSU so the that will then power the power supply and the power supply will give that socket a much cleaner waveform so it's it runs a lot quieter gives it, it gives it more torque so it, it does it is quite an improvement so but purely this purely the 24 volt kit on his own is a, is a good improvement so that's a good starting point and then like I say if you're feeling feeling like you want to go for it a bit get the TTPSU I can recommend it works really well now we'll test it. Okay, moment of truth. Put the uh, put the, the belt back on. See the nice metal pulley, and if you just just look at the height of that, it, this pulley this needs to be sitting below the edge, otherwise it's going to rub on the platter. So the height's right. Um, yeah, I'll switch on. I've, I haven't actually tried this yet, so this is quite quite exciting. Trying to zoom out so we can see the switch. There you go. We now have a twenty-four volt reader. Okay, that's done. If, um, if you've got any questions about your rig or any problems with it, just give us a call. It's Cheshire Audio. I'll put the number along the bottom of the screen. Um, anything really, if you just want to ring up for some advice or want some parts or want a new turntable, anything like that, give, give us a call. See you soon.